Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Principal escapes gun attack close to school in St. Andrew. Full speed ahead, a regulations coming for ganja edibles. And later in sports, West Indies women suffer serious defeat despite play of the match performance from captain. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. We begin with a developing story. The St. Andrew North Police Division is investigating a shooting incident in the vicinity of the St. Richard's Early Childhood Education Center on Red Hills Road in St. Andrew. According to police reports, it appears the principal was a target of the attack. The incident happened on Sunrise Crescent. The St. Richard's Primary School has since suspended classes for the day. Both institutions are located on the same property. To a TVJ News developing story, the body of an unidentified male was found in the vicinity of the Alpart Main Road in Nain, St. Elizabeth. Residents say they heard explosions last night. The Nain and Junction police are now on the scene. Now we'll have more on this story in subsequent newscasts. The Fair Trade Cannabis Working Group is in support of the suggestion that the Cannabis Licensing Authority and the Health Ministry implement regulations for ganja edibles and packaging. There have been renewed calls for the regulations following Monday's incident at the Ocheres Primary School in St. Anne. Jamila Maitland reports. Regional Coordinator for the Fair Trade Cannabis Working Group, Vicky Hansen, says the government and stakeholders need to get ahead of the game because ganja edibles are being sold in the country. Ms. Hansen says the working group wants to be part of the discussion. The call comes after 65 children fell ill when they consumed ganja-laced sweets purchased from a vendor. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton said the sweets, which were clearly labeled as containing THC, entered the country illegally. THC is a chemical substance found in ganja that can seriously impair bodily and brain function. It's what is what is uh, sh being showcased now. It's out there and has always been there. I think the challenge now that we have somewhat of a decriminalized framework, persons do not understand the rules and regulations surrounding the framework. And so it's now more open um, in, in, in its access. It's, it's always been there. We have offered as an association and as stakeholders to be a part of the education program. The Ganja Growers and Producers Association of Jamaica, which first made the call, has also suggested a partnership to develop and implement a public education campaign on responsible cannabis use by adults and the prevention of use by minors. In the meantime, Ms. Hansen said the standards for packaging of ganja products and removing their accessibility by children must be a priority. However, she says there must be greater public education as it appeared the vendors at the Ocherius Primary who observed the children being sold the sweets were not immediately alert to the THC ingredient, which was clearly on the label. So, so the problem you realize, uh, Dahlia, is twofold. As you mentioned, in this package it was labeled, mm. but being labeled, persons didn't understand what a th THC, THC is. And, and how it was labeled, this is very attractive to children. And so we need to have some standards regarding packaging, the accessibility of it to children should not be able to just tear this package open it and access the, the, the product. So that's one element we have to look at. In the other element in terms of how you deal with packaging and labeling, that's something we, the, the licensed producers, the GGPAG, your standards have been looking at in terms of packaging rules and how we also put on the label what it is for, who should access it, and where it is dispensed. And Jamila Maitland, TVJ News. Residents of Gordon Town in St. Andrew are demanding an explanation from the Jamaica Labour Party about plans to replace long-serving counsel for the Mavis Bank Division, Alvin Francis. They are urging the honest led administration to reconsider its decision. The details in this report. A man for the people. A man who gets the job done. Mr. Francis is a good man. I know him for many, many years. He's a person that you can meet and talk with. To be frank with you, I see the good what he's doing. Mm -hmm. 
and up to this point is still doing good for us. Residents of Gordon Town are furious over news that Jamaica Labour Party councillor Alvin Francis, more popularly known as Shine, will be replaced. They say they are disappointed by the move as things will not be the same in the division. I don't know the reason why they're going to move him and put somebody um, new, but I don't think I'll work with the person who's coming. One member of the community who says he's a People's National Party supporter lauded the councillor. Shine no bispans ya wa uh, who you vote for. Shine look out for the people. Shine represent the Labour Party up as more than even the Prime Minister himself. You can't tell any man that. It's when Easter come, Shine now get the Labour right bun and pass a PMP and get a PMP bun. If you give the Labour right one bun, you get the PMP one bun. They're demanding an explanation. What am I moving for? Do you ever tell the people why they are removing or why he must step down? If you're not educated enough, if you carry through the mandate and you was bringing subject and the thing, because I know Shine is an all time politician. So then I must have no subject and then I must 100% right. We understand. But he's doing the work. But he must do the work. Yeah. So until he's incapable of doing the work, you leave him alone. You don't want them to reconsiderate and look into where council are the man. So you don't want him to stay, you know? You don't want him to move. When contacted, General Secretary of the JLP, Dr. Horace Chang, said a candidate selection process is ongoing. However, the party is unable to reveal more at this time. He said an announcement will be made in coming weeks. Hal Shane Burke, TVJ News. And over in West Central St. Catherine, residents are demanding that the JLP replace sitting member of Parliament, Dr. Christopher Tufton. They claim that Mr. Tufton is responsible for the removal of their councillor, Keith McCook, as the two were unable to see eye to eye. They say if McCook will be replaced, then so should Tufton. We don't want Tufton. Him not do not be kissing tone. I will give him a position. McCook, who has represented the JLP since 2012, was not among the nine councillors approved by the governing party in its era council two meeting. Chairman Everett Warmington said the councillor's performance was below standard. He's being replaced by Michael Archer, CEO of Archer's Funeral Home in the parish. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News. Stay with us more stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News, continuing the local segment. Residents in Hatfield, Waterford, St. Catherine are calling on the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, to remove the backlog of garbage in their community. The residents complain that the issue is posing a serious health risk to the community, especially in light of the dengue outbreak. You know, we have a lot of disease that go around now. We're still in the COVID era, dengue. You know, mortgage are come out of the rubbish them now and all them type of thing there. You know, so we have a lot of children about here. You know, so my main concern is the garbage clean up. The garbage that piles up and causes the flies and the mosquito them. Me can't see in my house in peace. Especially the flies them. Them big like, not even bees, big like them and them full all over, no matter what you do. I spray, I wipe with bleach, I do everything. We can't get rid of them because the garbage is here. Let me just state that because the residents have nowhere to store the garbage at their home and garbage is overflowing, unfortunately, they have commenced the illegal dumping. So several of our play fields, they have started dumping on the play fields. Several of our drains that were clean within the last two months, they have started dumping garbage in those drains too because the truck is not here and they're, they're finding ways, other ways, to dispose of their waste, which is extremely sad. They want the problem to be fixed and soon. Whatever we have to do to get rid of them, we'll have to do it. But we alone cannot do it. We need the authorities to come in and do it for us. We are not the worst in Waterford here. Why this? For my, I'm not a long liver here. This is five years of me living here now. But I've never seen it like this before. Executive Director of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, Order Gordon, says the team started cleaning cleanup operation in the area from yesterday, which will be completed today. And it's now time for the Business Minute. 
ICR Holdings has completed a deal worth 2.7 billion Jamaican dollars. This allowed the company to acquire Island Car Rentals Limited and Jamaica Rental Company Limited. The deal, which has VM Wealth as the lead broker and arranger, closed in late July. The new holding company, founded by career banker Ryan Parks, holds a 100% stake in both entities. Allen Car Rentals Limited is a full-service ground transportation company with nearly 1,500 vehicles. ICR Holding CEO Ryan Parks says the company is set to look at leveraging expansion opportunities. Further afield, the UK's cloud computing market is to face a competition probe over concerns it is being dominated by Amazon and Microsoft. Media watchdog Ofcom said the two make up 70 to 80 percent of the sector in the UK, while closest rival Google has 5 to 10 percent. Ofcom had said in April it was worried a lack of competition made it difficult for businesses to switch providers. It has referred the sector to the UK's Competition and Markets Authority CMA to look into the issue. And that's it for the Business Minute. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, the St. Lucia government said it has received an audited report into the controversial $7 million EC dollars purchase of 100,000 doses of COVID vaccine that to date the country has not received. Prime Minister Philip Pierre criticized the previous Alan Chastanay administration for paying the funds upfront in 2021 without receiving the vaccines. Pierre said the report will be released when the government sees it fit. On the international scene, some 75,000 healthcare workers attached to Kaiser Permanente in the U.S. walked off the job yesterday in multiple states in what officials are describing as the largest healthcare worker strike in U.S. history. Workers in mid-Atlantic states will be striking for one day, while those in western states will be striking for three days. The practitioners are demanding that a number of issues be addressed to include wage increases, enhancing healthcare and retirement benefits, renewing the company's training programs, among other things. And U.S. President Joe Biden's administration has announced plans to build a section of border wall in southern Texas in an effort to stop rising levels of immigration, a move which will waive 26 federal laws in South Texas. Around 20 miles will be built in Star County along with its border with Mexico, where officials report high numbers of crossings. The president has been receiving heavy criticisms as he previously pledged in 2020 to not build a wall if elected to office. And those are the top regional and international stories. I'm Karen Simpson. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Spencer Darlington will have your midday sports report.